And we will begin our coverage of the show. We will be wrestling with NXT and AEW this week in um, on their shows. Not a lot to cover. Uh, but I didn't I'm, watch it, yeah. Uh, but I will say uh, Shachi Blackheart, they are building a star there, aren't they, Coleco? But Dakota Kai is already there. I like Dakota. They, they, they are, but yeah, Dakota, that's my girl. Dakota's fucking Love fine, Dakota. dude. Oh, but, man. but Shotzi, they're trying to give like the, because they don't have that punk rock, rock girl. And if you saw this with you know, NXT, yeah, they had her run the gauntlet. So they're they're pushing her hard. I'm glad so. Dakota upgraded her look. Dude, she had that like Bailey-ish look, and then she came into her own. I like that. Well, the way I see it, they built two stars in that match. They built Shotzi as the the underdog baby face that ran the gauntlet, and they built Dakota as the chicken shit here uh, that uh, uh, took uh, Shotzi's moment. So, hey, I like, yeah, I'm new to Shotzi too. I like her. I like her. Yeah. Shotzi's going to be like the she, rebel you know, chick. Though. She strikes She's me be like as the, a- Sorry, Clico, finish what you're saying. Sorry. No, nah, nah, that's all I wanted to say. They were trying to, to me, they're trying to give Shotzi the anti girl next door rebel chick. Is and it, that's it, all. Go for it. Is it just me, or is it, does Shotzi Blackheart feel like an AEW wrestler? Oh, no. She, she feels like more, I don't know. To me, she does. If she was Asian and weighed 50 pounds less, yeah. <laughs> that was nice. That's nice. Bro, that's yeah. a fact. If she was 50 pounds less... And if she, she worked in Japan as a geisha girl or some shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, some good storytelling on NXT. And um, then uh, the main event, obviously, uh, Keith Lee, um, Damian Priest, and uh, Don- Donovan Jaitakovic. Uh, I'll be right back. My dog is barking. Uh, and this was clearly one of the matches they had for TakeOver Tampa, but does, did Dijak really deserve another shot at the championship, Kalika? Storyline-wise, yes, because think about it, before Keith Lee went on the roll that he was on, the guy that was kind of had his number was... Jakovic, so it, it made sense in that perspective. And I've seen them do that, like, recently. Like, say, like, when Rhea Ripley got the title, uh, NXT Women's title, her first opponent was Tony Storm. If you watch NXT UK, Tony Storm beat Rhea Ripley for the title. So they're trying to, like, solidify it by, okay, first face the person who had your number the most. So it made sense in that regard to me. We had the uh, uh, debut of Dexter Loomis as well. Um, weird guy, right? Yeah. It, it, it's hard to do debuts when there's no crowd. It, it's just like, yo. It's, it's hard. Because the whole point of the debut is to get that wow yes. factor, shock factor, that pop factor. So... I think, I think it kind of works for Loomis uh, because he has that, uh, you know, I have to go to every door when I go, when I move somewhere type vibe, right? Okay, sure, that. <laughs> yeah, something like that, but I, I just wasn't feeling it. Maybe it's just because now we're getting normalized to watching it with no crowd, but Come to, me, to me with that, that, that de- when you do debuts, you kind of want them to be like either uberly dominant or somebody to get uberly hated, and it's kind of hard to do that with no crowd at all. Mitch, your thoughts on Dexter Loomis? On what? Say again. Dexter Loomis, your thoughts. Dexter Loomis, who the fuck? Dexter is that? Loomis. He debuted. I've never heard. Shows he didn't watch NXT this Wednesday. I told you I didn't watch it. I uh, didn't see it. Um, 
Um, the other thing on uh, NXT this week, Kushida literally took a, a pandemic for them to get him back on TV. He took uh, he defeated uh, Jacqueline Wild. Uh, what are your thoughts on maybe Kushida getting a push now? Uh, that all this crazy stuff's going on. Mitch? Uh, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm having to keep my eye on my dog. Coleco, your dog. Yeah, go to Coleco. Well, well, Kushida is one of those people Kushida. where, like, it, it's weird because he's, they kind of thought he would get the, the, the reception that Nakamura got when he came. You know what I mean? Because, like, you know that with the influx of Japanese stars, Th- that hole with the with the Japanese crowd is still there, even though Nakamura is there, and he's over like Rover just with his theme song alone. But they were trying to have that void filled in NXT, and and he's to me a lightweight version of Nakamura, and he just needs. I think he needs a takeover match before he really like gets the shine shine. Yeah. Um, because to me, takeovers are always the best for people that they try to develop or get them to get attention. I mean, the king take, take example, Velveteen Dream. Like, even though he lost yeah. in his match with Aleister Black, it propelled him further. You see what I'm saying? Than any other weekly TV segment would have ever done. Because all the eyes are on the ring or the product at that time. So right. that's just me. Moving on to the other channel, TNT, we are talking about Dynamite and AEW. Mm. Uh, it seems like AEW does their best shows when there's no crowd. Um, Which is very ironic. Correct. Uh, what was your thought on, on the show as a whole, Kaliko? <sighs> I feel like they do a lot of stunts that really don't need to be done. (laughs) And and I'm like, bro, why would you put yourself in danger for only like eight people that are cheering and all of them are your peers? Like, that's where I was like looking at like people in their heads. Prime prime example, prime example, like the, the, and and I know I'm going to give it away. The Darby Allen coffee drop he did at the top of the pole, and I'm like, bro, why? Because <laughs> why? Why? that's his style. Like, he feels like he's got to do that when he steps in the ring. I know, because I no, used to be like No, 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 no. No, no, but my point is, there's no crowd to receive that. You see what I'm I get what and, you're saying, but, and, but okay, hold on. But, I get what you're but, saying, but that's why they I, wanted to feel like it, it's not changed, and they want to put on the same performance they would in front of a crowd. No, no, but to me, they got more point. To me, they got... Bad, to me, they got more points and more brownie points by telling the story of Darby Allen and Cody. I know than I know. they did with the whole coffin drop bullshit. I'm just telling you why it's just their wrestler pride. But I know I agree with you to an extent. The first match up was Kenny Omega defeating Trent. Um, personally, 19 minutes for these guys felt way too long. I thought it was a good match. I enjoyed. I enjoyed. A, I enjoy EW. I don't enjoy WWE. I after, just. I don't know why. After <laughs> that's ten, something <laughs> new. I know. I'm. This is from, dude. I've given it so much time. I'm just telling you what style I like better. <laughs> it's okay. It, that's what floats your boat, man. But I mean, they damn I like both. The I've been me, but... WWE my whole fucking life. So shit. Um, but. Uh, Coleco, did this match have to go as long as it really did? For what they were trying to fill time with, yeah, but that's where I was telling you, that's why I said what I said a couple minutes ago. It felt like they're doing too much and they don't get the immediate reception, you know, the immediate benefit from it. I get what you're saying. Like Kenny Omega powerbombing Trent into the pole, if the crowd was there, that would be like, whoa, what the fuck? Like I said, they do a lot of things just for their own pleasure, dude. 
I mean, for their pleasure, but at the end for of the their day, their creative pleasure in their heads. Kenny Olivia, you know, he's always trying to do something like that. So. I, I get that, but at some point, the moves are gonna go away, and the storytelling is gonna have to happen. I agree. So, I'm just telling you what it is. That, I agree with you, though. But but that's where. It, but I'm just. I get it. But that's what I'm saying. To me, right, that's I get it. their. I that's get it. to me where their flaw is, because now you see where. They don't have people there to pop for the moves, so guess what they have to do? Tell the story in I, the ring. I agree with and, you. And at this point, to me, Cody is the accelerator, and everyone else is the decelerators. I think Mox is doing okay right now. But yeah. Hako Shida defeated Anna J with two Ys. Um, should Anna J that sounds any- like a porn name for sure, but yeah, go ahead. One Y or two Y's, Mitch? Yeah, two Y's is the porn name, in my opinion, but yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> we, I mean, there's not much more we could say about it. I, nah, it really isn't. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about her besides that match. The return of Scooter Dust. We have, next up, uh, Jake Cagle versus John Moxley. Um... Promo package. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe an interesting match. Maybe not. Uh, Hagel mm-hmm. finally dropped getting a loss. Yes or no? Scooter? Um, you know, I want, I'm, I'm probably just going to, I'm just going to say Moxley just because they don't have any ideas of their future. Um, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not sure if they've taped it already, and Hague was already the champion. Uh, but uh, yeah, if it, I'm not, I'll say Moxley. I mean, Mitch, where your thoughts on the match? For sure, Moxley. Uh, real quick, I was gonna say, I think John Moxley, the way he uh, like represents himself and the way he plays his character, I think he's probably my. Favorite wrestler in the world right now. Um, so I would not take the belt off him. I would keep it on him. And Kaliko. My mind is saying, yeah, Mockley is going to win. But wouldn't it make sense for AW to copy a certain angle where they had a newcomer, a.k.a. Jack Hager, beat the guy He's not a for newcomer. the title? No, no, he's the newcomer in AEW. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's been a yeah, he's, no. D- 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 he's the new finish. contender. Let I mean. me finish, because he hasn't wrestled. He's new because he only had two matches. Anyway, so yeah. the new guy beat the guy, beat Chris, beat Moxley, and Chris Jericho get jealous. Therefore, breaking up this circle. I mm-hmm. doubt it happens, but Randy Orton evolution. Bingo. That would be an interesting angle because Hager is, unlike Jericho, the actual MMA fighter, fights MMA fights. He has a good record. He does fight at Bellator, so I wouldn't put it past them. But... No, I you're not. Yeah, Mox is not never thinking. Never, never say never say never, my man. I don't think I didn't say never. I just don't think he's getting the belt taken off this time. Uh, a different idea in my head. What if Jericho accidentally causes Hager to lose, but he was yes, yes, yes. I like that. Somebody to upstage him. I like that. So, that could happen. I like that. <laughs> The Randy Orton story, take it and you know, adjust it to fit their you know, needs. Put a new spin on yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. I love how we're brainstorming here. We do every week. What are you talking about? Um, next match up, Lance Archer defeated Marco fucking Stunt. Uh, that they didn't. That didn't look right. I thought you were gonna say Lance Armstrong. It didn't look right. It looked like uh, someone beating up a midget. It was I was going to say football player. A <laughs> that's a was, story. Yeah, football player beats up average Joe. That's what it felt uh, like. Pros he not, no, but he's not that's even what, an average Joe. He's a... 
Compared to Lance Archer, called. he looks like Spud fucking Webb, bro. Exactly, but he's he's smaller than the normal person. If he's not an average Joe, what does that mean? He's a smaller than average Joe. He like I'm saying, he's smaller than the average person. Joe. Smaller than the average. Like joke. he said, he calls, him, he calls himself fun size. So. I mean, you have somebody. The only way he could have got to Florida in times was was that he fit into the luggage compartment of the plane. So that's how he or, got there. I I thought I thought uh, I thought Jake Hager threw him. He just sneak in <laughs> one of their wrestling boots. Uh, we got another Brody Lee, uh, video package this week, uh, the example one. I don't like it, I don't like the, like, it kind of was funny at first, but it's getting kind of stale, and it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit Brody. Are you saying that Vince McMahon maybe was right to not put him on the mic? Cause that's I didn't what say I'm that, thinking. I think... I think they're being stupid in how they go about. Like, you, he's a fucking dark order leader. You don't have him acting like fucking Vince McMahon. I, I just, it, it's just their story, the way they're doing it. I like like they that. say, you either die the hero or live long enough to be the villain. And guess what, Brody Lee is. It, it doesn't fit. Scooter, you have something to say? <laughs> I was about to say thanks, Harvey Dent. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, uh, I forgot what we were talking about now. Brody Lee. Oh, you blame me for everything. Fuck. It's been how many weeks has he been with AEW now? Three. I three. Three, and you're already taking a shit Wait, off. no, I'm not taking a shit on him. I'm criticizing when there's criticism bed to be fucking given. God. Long enough to not get a check. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't think that fits what he's doing. I think he should have done it. So he's a dark order leader. He should be a fucking big brooding motherfucker. He shouldn't be trying to do some comedy shit like, yeah, acting like this man. It doesn't fit what you think. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what I said. That's clearly what I said. So you are you liking what he's doing, uh, Scooter? Honestly, uh, if I actually watched it, I, I might. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's 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 not. And you bitch, if you don't know, you haven't seen it. One, first of all, yes, I have <laughs> seen it. Two, you just said you didn't. Okay, I'm <laughs> watch it live. <laughs> well, I don't think any of us saw it live. Uh, and, and that's got nothing to do with, you know, with with Brody Lee. Uh, you know, in fact, I'm sure if I, if I you know. Uh, he has creative control, actually, so it's his choice. If I, if I, you know, if I really paid attention to it, I'm pretty sure I'd probably like it just because Mitch doesn't. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Well, At least you you're go. honest. Um. Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall. Uh, Scooter, did you lend uh, QT a little bit of the Holy Grail ponytail to grow that whatever's on his head? Uh, I mean, Look at I, the top I, of his I, head! I, I thought Rogan was supposed to go like all over the head. <laughs> not just on like one specific area. He probably put it. No, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Have, have you ever seen that show, uh, Arrested Development, where he tried to put the help plugs? Yes, I am. Yeah, I love Arrested Development. It, it kind of looks like that. Uh, I love Arrested Development. And they defeated 8 and 9. If they had 11, they'd probably win the match. Um, make your jokes now. Mitch? Uh, I'm, you already did it for me, dude. I'm good. I mean, I mean, they should have. I mean, it should have been like seven and nine. It's seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to say. And it should have been like this giant, like set of jaws that just like came to eat them. <laughs> Kaliko, your thoughts it's, on eight and nine? It's like the Bianos. Thing eight, thing nine got beat by thing one. So there you go. There you go. 
right. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe Brody Lee's going to come out next week dressed as the cat in the hat. <laughs> Be better than what he's doing. Shit. He'll do a rap of walk it in my pocket to walk it like a <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That was funny. Next thing on the on the show was a Chris Jericho promo. He's in the hot tub drinking a little bit of the bubbly. Uh when he was interrupted by Vanguard One. My favorite part it's of this so promo, <laughs> this package was that Jericho was in pants in the hot tub. What was your best? Yeah. I thought you were about to say your favorite part of this package. No, and that, and that I love how uh, Jericho does swarmy shit like that. That it fit. It was that was funny. I caught that too. Scooter, your thoughts on the uh, on the package? Uh, well, it ain't bigger than mine. So, uh, um, I think it was a little long ago, right? You, you sound insecure. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, believe me, I'm not insecure about the camera. <laughs> it's this is the third time we're seeing Vanguard one in some sort of storyline. You know, it's it's to a degree where okay, we've already seen this in some way, shape, or form. Why is this any different than? what he did with Jeff and Impact. Well, I mean, it's funny, y'all. I mean, the <laughs> Louis the Hounds was pretty cool. Oh, no. It's K- he, he, Scooter's right. He, it's kind of a rehash. Because Chris Jericho is the king just, of improvisation. It's just a re And even Jericho had a problem with the first time they did it when Matt first came in with the Vanguard thing. He, Jericho said something about oh, he had to have it redone or some shit. What was your thoughts on the promo, Kalika? I, I got a couple things. One, is he wearing pants in the pool because of the COVID-19 thing? Or is that no, just No, he, he, he's or, a douchebag. Or, or, or that's just his thing. I'm he's just, just a douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, the release of the house. Man, I was expecting pit bulls. My man had like a whole <laughs> eclectic mix of of puppies and chihuahuas. And, and well, they were literal <laughs> hounds. And, and I, no, it, that was like, uh, what was that? Uh, the lady in the trap cast right there. That's, <laughs> that, that's what. It that was, was cute. Yeah, it was cute. I like dogs. So. But, I mean, it, it is what it is for, for what it could be. And three, uh, how come Vanguard One is getting more time than Nyla Rose, their women's oh, champion? You? Oh shit, dude! Right? Yeah, Robots are right. One Holy is shit! More entertaining. Robots are already taking our jobs. See? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying they're pushing. They're pushing no, the Hakita. Scared, the they're already one. taking over. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, I'm. I'm just saying they're pushing Hakita, the number one contender, but they're not pushing the champion. Uh, last thing I'll say about the, this promo was when he said release the hounds, I don't know why I thought Roman Reigns was going to run out. <laughs> yeah, why the fuck would you think that? I, I, I thought <laughs> Smithers was going to pop out. Uh, yeah, I would see Smithers before eventually allow Roman Reigns to go on Jericho AEW TV. <laughs> it's just a joke. All right, uh, yeah. I know, I'm just saying. Young Bucks video package, they're uh, hyping up the return of uh, Nick Jackson. Nice to see them. Well, it hasn't been that cares? long since we've seen uh, Nick Jackson. It's not a big deal. But uh, do you think they should have waited before putting I'll be right back. Nick on TV? Or do you think this is the right time? Scooter? I don't even know. I don't even know if it's if it's the right time. I mean, you could probably slip Nick Jackson back on TV and nobody would realize. All right, then. I don't think there's uh, any further, further to go with that. Um, so Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears defeated Darby Allen and Cody. This was the main event. 
Uh, you had Guevara and Spears gambling during the match. Uh, what was your thoughts on the match, Kalika? Uh, I got what they were trying to do, but to me, I think this was the match of the night just because of the storytelling that was between Allen and Cody, per se, more so than anything. And like I told you, this is where Cody thrives because not – no crowd to take the move spot, so you have to tell an uh, actual story with some ups and downs in this show. Now, not saying notwithstanding the match was good, but I still felt like they did too much. I mean, a 10 foot coffin drop for what? You know, if that was to end the match, that would have made sense, but to do it just to do it was just basically, you know, what I mean, it, it didn't flow with me, but. Hey, some people like it. They they like it. They like it. Um, in order for us to get Cody, okay, I'm back. Cody and Darby <clears throat> Allen, uh, Darby Allen has to defeat Sonny Guerrero, and Cody needs to, to defeat Sean Spears. Um, do you think we see Cody and Darby Allen in the uh, in the semifinals? Uh, yes, because uh, Shivani spoiled it. <clears throat> What about you, Mitch? You think we're going to see Allen and... Uh, he Jordan? showed this, spoiler. He just kind of said it. He, yeah. Shivani spoiled it, so, yeah. Shivani spoiled the shit out of it, just because I was like... Because when he said it, I was like, isn't Darby Allen fight Guevara? <laughs> exactly. So I think it's obvious. It's a foregone. When, that, when yeah. your memory goes away one after one hour after you've seen the brackets. <laughs> I'm just saying. Correct. Um, the one thing we didn't talk about was uh, they brought back the the crowd. It was only like eight people in the crowd, but I kind of felt like it made a difference. They had noise. It was something to look at uh, other than the match. Um, I, I think uh, AEW is doing the right thing by doing that. What are your thoughts about it, Scooter? Uh, I'm sorry. My mind drifted. Well, it, it happens. Again. It um, happens. AEW having uh, oh, they, the crowd. Crap. Um, I mean, were, were they like legit people who bought a ticket? <laughs> well, no, Dave. They get no. uh, cup tickets. Yeah, how could anybody get there? Uh -huh. well, you would have to know somebody, obviously. But how would you be able to leave your house and get and travel to the... Very fair question. They're plants. They're all plants. Exactly. Don't Come take on, it, though, Mitches. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Mitch fuck that plant. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Well, I mean, they weren't, you know, they weren't in their pots, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up. Boo, this man. <sighs> Cheer this Please man. Don't. Cheer him. I'm not after a pen, after a plant. Oh, uh, what are your thoughts on it, uh, Mitch? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, you're going to have to re-ask the you fucking the question. Then having the a crowd in AEW. <laughs> what about it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Does it make sense? Doesn't it? It make is sense? what it fucking is in this time, bro. I mean. <laughs> oh, uh, did, did you expect it? It is just being honest. Coleco, There's not much more to say. Kaliko, you want to finish this off? I mean, to me, like I said, it's trying to make that Jack of Spades walk, but it's yeah, funny because people are sitting there is. just making noise to make noise, and as ah. much as it's good to make noise to make noise, it kind of can get away from the match, and you're trying to focus. You want people to focus on what's going on in the ring, and by them kind of yelling, dumb shit, like, not even shit that's relevant to the match. It kind of takes a deviate your attention from commentary sometimes. 
or at least that's just been my thought process when I when I watch it. Like, I was more I know more about Brick Baker pulling out her chancla than than the what? match that happened. You know what I'm saying? What? But she did what now? Chicken sandwich too. She so pulled out her what's the chancla? Chancla is Mexican for shoe. Oh, <laughs> sounded dirty. It is, but. Because it's your shoe. Yeah, your shoe, I guess it technically would be dirty, right? <laughs> and with that, I think that will conclude our coverage of uh, NXT and AEW. I think next week is the abandoned building match between uh, uh, Johnny Cardano <laughs> and um, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, so looking forward to that. Yeah. More abandoned shit. Why they're already in an abandoned building, like you said a few weeks ago. No, that makes the, no sense. The, the building is is set for demolition, and only one man comes. I'm in. just saying they're already in an abandoned building, but okay. Yes, but only <laughs> one's coming out, and the uh, and the building is set to explode. That's stupid, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Uh, we will have all coverage of all things WrestleMania as we are covered in long form because there will be nothing better to talk about. Uh, and you can find us in about an hour from now on the remix with Scooter Dust. Tell them where they can find the remix, Scooter. They can find it at square.com backslash UMD. Dash, no, you want to do sports too? What is it today? You want to do dash sports dash two, and of course on Twitter at Scooter Dust and at UNBS Wrestling. And I just want to note it that I created a special WrestleMania graphic with a little speech bubble in the corner that's a with asterisks that's a card subject to change. As always. All right, and we will uh, bring. Uh, that WrestleMania show next Sunday at 2 o'clock, as we always do. Um, until then, we can join. you can join the conversation on Twitter. You can find me at JamesJ993. Where can they find Coleco Yachts? I am Coleco, and you can see I just posted funny because my son was watching WrestleMania 32 with me earlier. And he found out about this thing called the New Day. So now all he says yeah. is New Day rocks around me all the time. So he just I recorded it. And oh, threw it. Hey, he, he can barely <laughs> talk right now. He just started, I'm he, joking. He's just talking right now. So he's I'm now joking. into the whole. Now he's into the New Day rocks theme songs. So That's now. cool. I mean, how did he? How did he know Adam called Bebe before he knew New Day? Rocks? I know, right? <laughs> I deliberately was teaching him Adam Cole Bay Bay. <laughs> New Day Rocks, he learned on his own volition. Oh, so he's, <laughs> it's in print. The, it's so you forced print. that on the Adam Cole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. If, there's, if, if there was one thing I was going to die, if I died tonight, he knows the two sweet symbol, Adam Cole Bay Bay. And yeah, you got to teach so, him the two sweet. Yeah, there you go. He's, set, pop, he's pop. set for life. Yeah. He's set for life right now. You gave him the key. For so, life, get it? For life, yeah. Uh, what can they find Mitch Mayhem if Mitch Mayhem tweeted? I look at Twitter every now and then and just ain't got much to say. Um, at Mitch Mayhem X if you want to shoot at me. And where can they find Scooter Dust? At uh, Scooter Dust and at UNPS Wrestling. All right. For okay, my Micro Machine Sky. <laughs> hey, K Fape here. Uh, for my co-hosts, Coleco Yachts, Mayhem, Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this is Wrestling oh. With...
Entertainment. The world is burning. Let's masturbate. 